Hi, I'm Dan Stein. I'm excited to share this video series with you on Autodesk Forma, sponsored by Autodesk, a design and make company. In this series, we'll look at a number of features and workflows, some of which we're using at the top-ranked architecture firm Lake Flato that I work at. We'll look at early massing and interoperability with Revit and Rhino, how we can track areas, and then look at some of the really interesting analysis tools such as CFD, wind analysis, noise analysis, thermal comfort. Some of these we've already used on well building reports for our own office remodel and presenting to clients. We'll compare the results and workflows with other tools and talk about when to use Forma versus another tool and are the results accurate and how to interpret them. So there's a lot of really interesting features we'll look at, including the new solar energy analysis tool that just came out where we can look at PV potential. So come on, let's check out Autodesk Forma together. To start Forma from the beginning, we pick an area that we want to analyze. We'll look at this base in Austin, Texas. So we click the new project, type Austin, pick from the list, and then we're gonna pick the area. I'm just dragging to figure out the exact area that I want, and then I'll click confirm. After a few moments, we'll get the opportunity to import additional contextual data, such as buildings, terrain, road data, and then finally property line data. This feature requires a smaller area, so we have to drag the corners of the selection box to a smaller area. And once it's small enough, we'll get the option to click order. And then just in a few moments, we'll have this terrain data of the area that we selected. You can see the banks along the river have a slope to them. I click the library option on the left and I can import the data that I ordered. So here are the contextual buildings. Next, we're going to create a new proposal, but first we'll rename the existing one so that we have the existing conditions. And then we'll call this Exploration A. In the area that we're going to look at, we'll assume that this building that's in our way is an old dilapidated cast in place concrete parking garage that needs to be removed. So we're actually going to just move this exclusively into the existing conditions proposal. That way we still have it. And then in this exploration A, we're going to create our site limits. Notice there's no area listed in the properties for site limits. We can use a feature within the site limits to pick the property lines to just have it fill that area. You can see there's 76,000 square feet for site A, and then I'm naming the second area site B, and then together they have 152,000 square feet. We'll assume that this site is going to have some underground parking. We notice that we can look at the site in both 2D and 3D and reset north. We can turn on the aerial imagery similar to Google Maps and other online map platforms. I'm going to use the building tool to sketch the footprint of the two site pads to create an underground parking area. Notice there's an option in properties to call it parking. Three stories would have been 1800 parking spots two stories is 1200 and then I'll simply use the move command to move this parking area mostly below grade. This is a sloped site so you can see on the south edge it pokes up a little bit but that'll be really great for our early analysis opportunity. I'm going to use the line work tool to sketch the footprint of a building. I can switch back and forth between 3D and 2D, and then I can also type in lengths once I have my cursor pointing in the correct direction. I'll go to 3D to finish the footprint, and then I can drag vertically. You'll notice the number of stories is listed there in properties. I can set the function to the two defaults that are built in. So that one's commercial. There's another one called residential. Notice I selected the first floor and I'm creating a custom function called retail. There is also an efficiency factor that we could enter as set to default at 0.9. 
And then I'm just going to quickly create a few more pieces of the massing for this multi-story tower. Each time I create a mass, I can specify a function and then the total start adding up in the properties for this entire project. In the 2D plan view, I'm going to use the move command just to make this design a little bit more interesting for this example that we're looking at. I'll create one more mass. And for the height of this, I can actually pick an adjacent building. Perhaps that building is, we know, is the maximum height according to zoning. So I'll set this last piece to commercial. We'll notice the selected elements show up in properties. And then when nothing's selected, the properties show the gross floor area for the entire project. I'll use the move command to nudge this over and then also down away from the property line at the grade. We now have our first tower completed. When nothing's selected in the model, you can see in properties under area metrics, we have a nearly 1 million square foot GFA. We'll speed things up a little bit to get some additional new context into our model that we can analyze. So we'll create uh, two smaller retail areas at grade level and then another tower similar to the first one. You'll notice when I topped off that tower, I was able to pick another adjacent building just to set the top easily. Once we create this small area, we'll look at a feature where we can select one of the masses and then go into a 3D sketch mode to make more edits or more refined edits to the geometry. Notice all the floor to floor heights listed on the right. And then in the mass, we can select the edge and simply use the move command to taper this edge of this part of the tower back 12 feet from the base to the top. All the floor plates automatically update and now we have this more refined mass element in our model before having to get into Revit or Rhino, which we'll do later to make even more detailed model adjustments. So we've tapered the edge of both of these towers and we have our different functions highlighted in their various colors. We know how many parking spots we can roughly get into this project. So we have a really quick early massing model with a lot of information. Now that we've completed creating a proposed scenario, we can switch back on the left to the existing conditions just to remind ourselves what the site looks like with the existing building. We can have as many proposals as we want. In this case, I'm going to duplicate a proposal before we do the PV analysis to actually remove the parking structure. Since the parking technically has a roof, it would be considered in the analysis. Notice all the options we have in the upper right to do analysis on this project. We'll take a look at the hot off the press solar analysis. We simply click run analysis and nearly instantly get this total solar energy and then also an annual electrical output based on coverage and efficiency. Initially, it's looking at just the roof surfaces, but we can also have it look at the facades as well. We can use the inspect tool to pick different locations on our model to get kilowatt hours per meter squared. This is uh, telling us that areas aren't as good as at creating power as other areas because of self-shading and adjacent buildings. All of the legends in Forma have this really great opportunity to uh, filter out areas. So we could have looked at just the high performing areas, for example. We can also switch to just looking at facades and not roofs. And then we can adjust the efficiency from 10% all the way up to 25% and then adjust the surface coverage area, which would be important on the roof to make room for HVAC and window cleaning equipment. Now that we've seen how easy it is to run solar analysis in Autodesk Forma, let's take a look at comparing the result in Autodesk Revit's solar tool. By the way, I'll put a link to this in the chat. A while back, I wrote a blog post on my blog, BIM Chapters, comparing Revit's solar analysis tool to NREL's PV Watts. 
PV watts is an industry standard that many people will go to that website and manually enter information about roof area and orientation and efficiency, whereas you can do all of that in Revit in a fraction of the time. And the point of this blog post is to show that the results are similar. In fact, Autodesk worked with NREL to make sure that the results are accurate. Also, you'll notice here at the beginning of the blog post that Autodesk Revit Solar Tool uses the Perez all-weather sky system. This is different than what Autodesk Forma uses, so the results will be slightly different, but still within a good margin of error. So back here in Forma, we're going to actually push this model out to Revit. But before we do that, I'm going to duplicate this proposal and just delete some of the geometry to make this a really simple comparison. So I'll delete everything except for this one building. Then if we hover over the proposal option, there's an option to push this geometry into Revit. If you haven't installed the Revit add-in, you can do that right here by downloading the link and installing it. I'll just hit send, it takes a fraction of a second, and then we jump over to Revit, which I have open. I'm in an out-of-the-box Revit template for this example. And then on the massing and site tab, I'm gonna click load proposal in the Forma area. So this Forma area is what showed up after we installed the Revit add-in for Forma. In this dialog, we'll have several options we can pick to import the geometry. We're not going to get too detailed on the interoperability with Forma and Revit in this video, so we'll just select the defaults and click Load. Now in Revit, you can see we have this great context model, and then our one simple building. If we look at the filter, we can see there's floors, one roof, and several exterior walls. The first thing I'm going to do on the Analyze tab is go to the Location option and make sure that the model came in correctly into the right location. We can see that it is in fact in Austin, Texas. I'm going to select the weather station that starts with 59. Any weather station that starts with 59 in Revit is an official real-world weather station that typically occur at airports. And then also on the Analyze tab, a separate install that you have to get from manage.autodesk.com is the Autodesk Solar Tool. So we'll start that up and then I'll switch the study type to solar energy, which is what Autodesk Forma did. It's set to select all roof surfaces. So you can see right now it already has a roof surface selected. I'm going to go into settings and we'll notice that the efficiency is set to 16% and the coverage is currently 100. We'll make this 60 to match what we have in Forma. Interestingly enough, this is a place where Forma excels over the Revit Solar Tool in that here you have to explicitly enter the efficiency and the coverage area, whereas in Forma you have sliders and you can adjust those and see the PV potential or solar energy in real time. So now that we have all this entered, you can see the roof area that's currently selected. We hit update. Revit does a quick calculation, and you can see there's 669 meters squared of PV panel area and 188,000 kilowatt hours per year. If we go back to Forma and run an analysis on this one building in this proposal, so each proposal can have its own set of analyses, which is really great for comparison. Now that the analysis is done, we'll click to view the results and we'll make sure that the surface coverage area is 60% and the efficiency is 16%. Notice the area is 669 meters squared, which is exactly the same as what Revit listed. And then rather than 188,000, we have 143,000, which is primarily related to the different engine that's being used in the background, but generally really accurate results that we can use early on in the design process. So that's a quick look at Autodesk Forma. Stay tuned for some more videos in this series to look at some of the other analysis tools. It's really exciting and I hope you get a lot out of this.